Hi, this is Sean Sullivan from Technique Peak, and today we're going to go over hip abduction strength testing uh, and what the possible compensations are if someone is weak in their hip abductors or their glute muscles, how they might be making up for it, and what you want to look for when you're doing your testing uh, during your exam. So I'm going to have my patient Marvin lie on his side. Marvin, can you turn to the side for me? Uh, so the, the traditional strength testing for hip abduction is sideline against gravity, and then you're applying manual resistance. Uh, we want to make sure that we're biasing the right muscles to make sure we're testing the right thing and minimizing his opportunity for compensation. Uh, even with the right setup, he's still going to try to beat us any way he can. And so we want to be on the lookout for what those compensations might be. So I'm going to have Marvin lying on his side with his bottom leg bent a little bit. We're going to straighten out his top leg and then have him roll forward. If he's rolled back too far, he can use his hip flexor or his TFL to compensate. So we want him to roll forward a little bit, and that's going to put the axis of pull uh, on the glute muscles. I'm going to position him first. A lot of people have trouble holding this position on their own. And if you have him try to lift off the bat, he's more likely to roll. So first, I want to make sure he can hold the position against gravity without compensating. That's kind of my baseline test before we actually apply resistance. So I'm going to position his leg in abduction and really a neutral extension, but you almost always have to pull them a little bit back to hit that neutral position. And I'm gonna say, Marvin, can you hold this position here without letting your leg drop? And I'm gonna see, can he do it on his own if I take the pressure away? What he might do is roll backwards and that's gonna allow his hip flexors to take over and assist a little bit. Um, he also might, you might see his trunk lean where he's gonna side bend and use his uh, QL and obliques to assist his pelvis holding the leg up, but that's not coming from the acetabulum to the femur joint. That's not coming from the hip joint. So that also would be a compensation. So I'm going to keep a hand here to feel. I'm going to bring him back, bring his leg into the position. Uh, the hip rotation is another compensation. So we're going to point his toe just a little bit down. If he rotates out, that's another way to get hip flexor involvement, which uh, would defeat the purpose of this test. So we're going to hold him here, check the pelvis with my hand, and then see if you can hold that position. Very nice. If you can keep it there without it falling, then we're going to apply some resistance. So we always do it with the short lever on first. So we're just applying force through the femur. Most people, you should be able to beat this way. If you have someone that's really strong, you can always move it distally to the ankle. Um, but most times it's not required. So we're position Marvin. All right, hold right there. I want you to bring your leg up. Don't let it fall. You should feel the work here. And I'm going to put a little pressure down. Can you hold that position? And I'm going to start with just a gradual pressure and see if he starts to compensate. If you can, then I can apply a little bit more and you'll see he starts to give there. So that gives me uh, a general sense. You can use the MMT grading system here. Um, I don't always think it's the most helpful system, but in this case, a three is a pretty significant barrier to meet. Um, so I think using that number system for hip abduction testing does have some value uh, for tracking progress. Thanks.